It's Weekend Journal on US 99.5. One of our favorite guests is back, Dr. Tracy Weiland, currently on a speaking tour on the topic of 21st century careers. And uh, her new book, Employed for Life, 21st Century Career Trends, released earlier this year. We're going to talk about something kind of fun today, Tracy, the career selfie. Yeah. <laughs> I like this term. So everybody takes selfies, but you're saying we should actually take a career selfie and look at our career and how it's doing, right? Well, you know, Laura, I saw a statistic about a week ago from Google saying that we take 93 million selfies a day. Wow. If you can, right. <laughs> And then I saw that they also published that we look at our cell phones a hundred billion times a day to look at either text messages or our photos. So I just sat there and said, if we could only spend that much time thinking about our career, we might be all better off. Oh, my gosh. You are certainly right about that. That's quite a lot of time that we're staring at our phones or at pictures of ourselves. So you've got 10 work trends that are going to help everybody keep up in this digital world. Everything is digital now, Tracy. And your first trend here is all about contribution. You say contribution is key. Yes, because a lot of us came from a generation where a loyal worker was appreciated, and it still is appreciated. However, today you need to think about being an entrepreneurial worker, entrepreneurial employee, someone who's constantly contributing to the group, to the firm. And this is the way I feel that you can keep yourself employable for the long haul. And this kind of segues nicely into the second trend, because we all hear about the A player, you know, the worker at your job that's just the A player, he's always on the ball. But now we're talking about becoming a T person. What do you mean by that? That's right. The A player used to mean either a generalist that you could move around the company and they could just do about everything, or the specialist was later on very popular where you had to be specialized in HR or marketing or IT. And today it's really about being both. And we call that a T person or transdisciplinarity. And I would even add in that you need to have some technical proficiency on top of being able to be a generalist and a specialist. So I think that's important. It's a big difference today than in the past. Let's talk about the boss, the manager, if you will. Everybody is often pretty concerned about making sure the boss looks good, your manager looks good, and nothing's wrong with that. But what about when you want to just make your own personal brand look better? Is that okay? Well, I think that's very smart. I think a lot of us were trained to make our manager look good to their boss, and in return, we might get a promotion or a bonus. But really today... Employers are realizing that the employee is the brand of the firm. So think about it when you walk into a hotel. The first person you meet is usually not the general manager. It's either the bellboy, the concierge, the front desk, or even the restaurant. And their impression to you is really setting the stage in your mind of what the hotel brand is. So I think it's important that we encourage our employees to have positive self-brands because they're really the positioning the firm. And that's going to just boost company morale, too, which kind of creates a team environment. And this is something that I think is really important for probably just about every job is that team environment, you know, as opposed to having just one person who comes in and saves the day. How can you better yourself to better your whole team? Yes, we used to even get compensated on being that individual contributor who saves the day. We used to get spot bonuses and promotions just for that. And today, there are many studies showing that teams are much more productive than individual contributors. And so now leaders of companies are shifting and saying, you need to be a team player and you need to be a team leader. So I need you to be able to be an A player that takes the B players and can bring them across the finish line just as effectively as you can reach that goal yourself. And while we're on the topic of teams, your fifth work trend here in a digital world is all about recognizing that the firm isn't your family, it's your team. How can you differentiate between what your family is and what your team is? Well, one is just time. The average employment of an adult today is actually only around four years and four months. So you can't really spend enough time at a firm anymore for them to become your family. But many of us think of the firm as taking care of us, being mom and dad to us, helping us find our friends, our spouse, retiring together and you know, a pension. But today, it's much quicker. And so there needs to be a different dynamic with a firm. And you are a team. I contribute to you. 
for the benefit of the firm and you pay me right, and give me different kinds of benefits and perks for my contribution and you help me gain experience and skills. So it's more of a two-way street today than in the past. Yeah, it's more of a win-win when you put it that way. We're talking with Dr. Tracy Weiland about these 10 work trends in a digital world. You can learn more, by the way, at tracyweiland.com. We are on trend number six here. The tap on the shoulder. You're saying that's done, right? That is done. Longevity does not mean promotion anymore. And I do have a lot of people say to me, why is that young person getting promoted over me? Or why is that new person getting more opportunities than me? It's because you might still be in the mindset that because you've been in a company for a long time, it's supposed to be your term. Rather, companies today are saying, who's contributing, right? Who's doing different things to expand themselves and expand the firm? That's the person I want to promote. On to number seven. This one, I'm going to need you to explain to me. Culture can kill you. Well, culture I refer to as company culture. And in the past, all the companies were vanilla. You could work at IBM and you could go to GE and you could go to any kind of company because they were very similar. Today, it's very different. One company might have a very hierarchical type of culture. Another might be very entrepreneurial. Another one might be brainstorming. Another one might be process-oriented. So it's important to understand the culture of the firm and where your fit is. Because if you don't fit one, they may let you know. Or number two, more importantly, is you probably won't be very happy there. And either you'll fester over it at work or you'll look for a way to exit the firm. Yeah, and I think being happy at work is is probably one of the most important things. If you can be happy in your job, I mean, consider yourself lucky and your employers are going to be happy too because you're probably going to want to do a better job. Trend number eight here is uh, finding your passion is replaced with personal exploration. Explain that one to me because passion and exploration, you can kind of link the two together. Well, I think you can, Lori. You know, everyone asks me what's your passion and I say how could I possibly know what my passion is unless I was born knowing I want to be a doctor a rock star an entrepreneur quite frankly there are 30 percent more jobs available today than when I graduated any one of those new types of jobs could become a passion so I tell people explore try different jobs try different projects look at what you do well Look at what you like to do. Can you map the two together and actually make money on it and also enjoy it at the same time? And remember, your passion can change. You can have something in your 20s, and then you may do something completely different in your 30s and still get as excited and passionate about it as you were in your 20s on something else. Right. You can find new passions that, quite frankly, you never knew that you even had. The ninth trend here is all about how to be a marketable employee. How can we do that? That's right. You know, I have actually a colleague of mine who is an exceptional director of operations. A firm can put him in. He can understand the strategy, develop a process, pull a team together, and get a team efficient within a month or so. And then that firm moves him around because they know that he is an excellent director of operations and he's, he can replicate that skill. So he's quite marketable inside the firm and also outside the firm. But then I have another colleague of mine who is a transformational employee. That means she's like, for example, an excellent digital marketing person. Not only can she be moved around internally, but she can market herself, and she does to firms outside of herself. So her mindset is, I don't have to stay in a firm for life. Rather, I have a brandable, marketable, marketable employee that any company may want to pick me up as an exceptional digital marketing person. And the number 10 trend here, and I love this, I think this might be the most important one, firms and jobs come and go, but it's people that are gonna last. That's right, you know, people travel in packs, quite frankly. 75 to 80% of the jobs today, both inside and outside of the firm is through networking. And keep up with people, and you have so many more ways you can do it, not just face-to-face, but through the social media, LinkedIn, many of these sites. And people will remember you and bring you, if they go on to new jobs, they'll bring you with them. So I think it's important to remember that you may outlive their firm, but you won't outlive the people that you work with, and they'll remember you. That's true. Networking, is it's something you always want to be doing, whether you have a solid job right now. You just never know. It never hurts to network and to get your name out and uh, to network with people in your field and outside of your field. We've been talking with Dr. Tracy Weiland. Her website, tracyweiland.com. She's got a book out released early Earlier this year, Employed for Life, 21st Century Career Trends. And now we know how to take a career selfie. I feel very accomplished. Yes, and I hope that you uh, 
can look a little more about yourself, your career, and then take a photograph of it later and tell everybody about your success. Of course. Thank you so much, Dr. Weiland, for coming back on the show. 